Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's Brie. <laughs> and I am here today to discuss Ready to Love, Make a Move, episode three, titled Seeing Double. Okay, let's get into it. So we start this episode off with Sharice and Zadia still arguing in the kitchen. And so Zadia explains to Sharice that, you know, if she felt a certain way about waking her up to open the door for her, then she should have said something to her. So Sharice explains that, you know, she's uncomfortable, you know, she left her safe space in order to open the door for Zadia. So to sum it all up, y'all, because this is a continuation from last week's episode, both women said that they're done with the situation and that they're just going to move on from it. So we skip over to the next scene and it's the next day and we learn that Tamika, the matchmaker, is setting Zadia up on a blind date. So in Zadia's confessional, she tells us anxious because she likes Cameron and however, she makes it clear that she wants to continue to keep her options open when she's dating other men. And so remember last week um, when Tamika informed the girls that they were going to go on blind dates next? Well, this week's episode, that's what happens. So, um, in the next scene, uh, we see a handsome man just out of nowhere, just pop up on our TV screen. We see a handsome man with a bald head walk into a restaurant. And we learn that his name is Kirsten and he's 38 years old and he's an ex NFL player slash entrepreneur. So we learned that his blind date that he set up on is for Ashley. So Ashley arrives to the restaurant and she is immediately attracted to him. Okay, so she looking at him all up and down. She's like, yes, I guess he's her type. So um, he's super tall and, you know, she's just loving it. So they're both kind of nervous when they meet each other. And um, she does let him know that he's handsome. So they have a little banter going on, you know, just talking you know, like that. I guess when you're kind of flirting, you just start talking and everything. Um, so they keep going back and forth and they seem to be vibing with each other. Next, we skip on over to a new scene where we see the same guy, Kirsten. And so I'm kind of like, okay, why are we seeing him in a different scene? So it turns out that he's going on another blind date to a restaurant and the person he's going on a another blind date with is Zadia. So I was like, oh, okay, Tamika, I see what you're doing. So what appeared to me is she's sending the same guy um, to go on dates with two different women in the house or how many of her women, could be all four, but we'll find out later in the episode as I recap for you. So I think that's what she's doing. And I so anyway, when Zadia walks into the restaurant, he seems so mesmerized by her. Like immediately he is attracted to her and he let it be known because he was looking her up all up and down. Like it was just so funny. So anyway, you know, Zadia understands that he's super attracted to her, but you know, she's looking like, why is he looking at me so much right now? And she starts getting, you know, self-conscious about it their food comes out so their waiter comes over with their food and he takes her by the hand and asks her you know can we pray over our meal so they take hands and all of a sudden it's kind of quiet so he has his head bowed and his eyes closed and she kind of has her eyes closed but she's kind of looking like okay are you gonna pray so he's just silent and then all of a sudden you know he looks up so Zadia in her confessional, she says, you know, she needs to know what he's saying to Jesus. Like, I don't know what you're praying to him. You know, he should have said it out loud, but you can tell it was a little awkward for her. So next we jump back over to Ashley's date with Kirsten and um, she informs him that she has six little brothers and one sister and he lets her know that he's the youngest of five. And so Ashley starts telling him that she thinks she wants one child because he did ask her, you know, do you want children? So she said that she thinks she wants one child, but she's kind of terrified to have them. Um, it was mostly because I think physically she's, you know, kind of scared to give birth. 
Um, so Kirsten seems really intrigued by that. And he asked her, you know, does she believe that she'll be a good mother? So Ashley replies and she's like, yeah, you know, I'm definitely going to be a good mother, of course. And so we see in Ashley's confessional, she says about Kirsten that he makes her feel good. He makes her laugh. You know, he's attractive. Um, but overall, she could kind of get a feel that he may be a ladies man. Um, or if he's not a ladies man, it could be a beautiful love story between the two. In the new scene, we see Kirsten ask Zadia, you know, if she has any children and she says no. So he lets her know that he doesn't have any kids, but he wants kids when he gets married. So Kirsten tells us that if he had to compare his date, and this was like when he was on camera, I guess, you know, alone time. So he said if he was to compare his date between Zadia and Ashley, that his date with Ashley was more fun and more energetic. So next we see a guy, you know, just randomly outside and we are introduced to a man named Walter. So Walter is a 46 year old musician and we learn he's going on a blind date with Bernicia. So they meet each other outside somewhere, outside of a house. Um, and we learn that they are going inside to do a cook cooking class with each other. So once they get inside, the chef informs them that they're going to cook a crawfish dish. And I've never had crawfish, so, and I can't really have seafood like that, so I'm just wondering how that came out. But anyway, so we then jump over to a new scene where we see Cherise walking up to her blind date. And guess who her blind date is, guys? It's Walter, the same guy who's going out with Renisha. So now we kind of see the pattern here. So it seems like Tamika got two new guys for the women and she decided one guy is going to go on blind dates with two of the women and then the other guy, the second guy, is going to go out on blind dates with the other two women. And so I think she kind of wants to gauge how each of their dates will go and who may be a better match for these guys. So anyway... <laughs> So anyway, um, back to Sharice and Walter. So when they meet up, they're outside in front of a horse and carriage and Walter is standing there with a bottle of champagne. So they meet and you know, they get inside the horse and carriage. So he lets Sharice know that he was born and raised in New Orleans, um, but he has traveled throughout the world. And in Teresa's confessional, she states that she's attracted to him and she likes how he dresses and that she liked that he was excited to her because when Sharice walked up, like you can immediately tell like he was attracted to her. So he did like that. So she said that made her feel good. So anyway, he tells her that he's a musician and he's written songs for various artists, you know, people we know. I can't really remember what he said the artists were, but they're basically famous people that we know. So we hop on over back to he and Vernicia's date and they start cooking their dish together during their cooking class. So she tells him that she likes a man, you know, that can cook. Um, and that she sort of is kind of tired of cooking all the time and she would like to be with a guy who can cook. So, you know, Walter's letting her know, you know, I'm enjoying your company. And um, he said he feels like Renisha is kind of like an around the way girl, somebody he kind of knew and grew up with and he felt super comfortable with her and that they're connected that way. So we head on back over to Walter and Sharice's date and he lets her know that he was married for 19 years, um, but that things just didn't work out. So Sharice tells him that she's been working so much and that she needs someone to come and sweep her off her feet. Cause you know how Sharice is child. <laughs> um, and so he's like, okay, you know, here I go. Um, and then they both said that, you know, Walter and Sharice both said that they've enjoyed their date together. They've enjoyed talking with each other and they just, you know, had a good time. So back to he and Bernicia's date, she asked him, you know, 
would it work between them if you know her living in Houston and him living in New Orleans like how would that work so he lets her know that if two people want to make it work they want to make something happen they both can so Bernicia said that she's not opposed to moving to New Orleans but it would have to be for the right man and for the right situation so they prepare their food and they start feeding each other at the table after they finish cooking. So he, you know, says he had a good time with Bernicia. So next, a new scene pops up and we see Charisse go on a second date with Maurice. And remember, Maurice was the guy she decided to keep last week, which was her second date from last episode. So she meets up with him at a park and it's really cute because he has like, a picnic, you know, um, basket set out and, you know, plates and stuff. So he set up a picnic for them for their date. So, you know, Sharice is filling the picnic and she notices as they're sitting down on the grass that he's wearing Louis Vuitton sandals. So, you know, just bells and whistles going on in her head like, oh yeah, he's into like designers. So she likes that. And then he likes nice things. So he does tell her that he likes nice things. Um, and you know, that's just his thing. So Sharice is loving it. So as we're watching the scene, um, things start getting awkward. And this is really? how I felt. Really? She's explaining it to you. Yeah, I'm just saying, really. Here he go, being quiet again, not asking Sharice any questions about herself. You know, she's having to keep the conversation flowing. And it's just all awkward again. So in her confessional, you know, she says she's attracted to a successful man, um, but she can't deal with the man trying to get where he needs to be in life. And she feels like, you know, this guy's already there. So she tells Maurice that she has to get him to talk to her more. So basically she lets him know, like, I want you to ask more questions, but he says to her, you know, I'm not much of a talker. I'm more observing of you. Um, that's kind of how I get to know people. I just kind of observe them. And how I interact with you, I don't really need to ask you questions because I'll know by interacting with you. I, I don't know how he figures that out, but okay. Um, so <laughs> Cherie says that, you know, she doesn't understand why this guy is so closed off. And, you know, this date is just awkward again because he's just not asking her questions and they're just not really talking. So that day ends and um, we're back at the house and it's nighttime and we see Ashley and Zadia talking on the couch. So they both start talking about their date with Kirsten. And so Ashley lets Zadia know that her date with him went well and she was feeling him. So Zadia tells her that, you know, I went on a date with him too. So Ashley's face is like, um, really? Like, okay. <laughs> but I could kind of tell that Ashley was like, I don't really like this, you know, us dating the same guy, but it's all good. <laughs> so Ashley does let us know in her confessional that she's not really into them dating the same guy, you know, like I was saying before. So as they're talking about their date with Kirsten, in here comes Charisse, and she starts walking into the room with them. So, and she sits on the couch as well. So Zadia lets Charisse know that she wants to have a private conversation with her. And so Charisse is receptive. She's like, okay, yeah, we can talk. So Ashley leaves and Zadia says to Charisse that when she went for a walk that morning, you know, she was thinking about how things shifted between them and how the vibe in the house was just off because of their little argument and that maybe they can find their way back to being cool again. So, you know, Zadia does apologize, you know, for waking her up that morning and she did let Sharice know that it wasn't done maliciously. So Sharice asked Zadia, you know, would you, I had rather not said anything and Zadia says, no. She was like, I just feel like you blindsided me and you made me feel like I offended you on purpose. And so Sharice interrupts her while Zadia is talking. And she's like, well, how did I make you feel like that? So Zadia is like, you know, when you said those things about me, 
you know, that's just how you made me feel. You were saying things to Tamika about me and it was just making me feel that I was offending you on purpose when I really wasn't. So Sharice tells Zadia, you know what? Just let it go. Cause I ain't in the mood. Like just let this whole situation go. But obviously Zadia doesn't want to let it go. So Sharice then says, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to let it go because we ain't going to keep talking about this. <laughs> and so we see that both of their voices start elevating because I guess Zadia is annoyed with Sharice because she probably feels as though you're dismissing me when I'm trying to have a conversation with you. I'm trying to squash this, but then you're over here and you don't want to hear it and you're telling me to just let it go. So... um, Zadia tells her that she wants to grow from this and Sharice takes this and she's like, she's like, take it and grow from it. So at this point, Sharice is just annoyed and Zadia says that a person that tells her business is a person that can't be trusted. So Sharice is like, okay, fine. And she's okay if Zadia doesn't like her and she's just going to move on from the situation. And so Sharice just ups and leaves because I guess she was annoyed at this point because Zadia wasn't letting it go. And also Zadia was just like, I can't trust you. So Sharice is like, you don't trust me? Fine by me. So the next day, um, Zadia and Ashley, they go to a bowling alley together, just those two. And we find out they're going on a double date with Cameron and Donald. And remember Cameron and Donald from last week's episode, their dates. Um, so they arrive and Ashley lets Zadia know that she hasn't spoken to Donald in two days. So she's like, it's giving pretty much friends. <laughs> like she feels she's being thrown in the friend zone because she feels, you know, if a guy really likes you, he's hitting you up every single day. And because she hasn't heard from him in two days, she pretty much feels like she's his friend. And so um, Zadia lets her know that, you know, she likes talking to Cameron and he makes her feel like a woman. So as they're sitting down talking, Cameron arrives um, first and he notices that he and Zadia kind of have like matching outfits. It was mostly their shirts. It, it was kind of, I think, like print pattern and they did kind of match in a way. So they, that was kind of weird. So they were feeling that. So Cameron sits down next to Zadia and, you know, he's looking all in her eyes <laughs> and you can tell that Zadia is just really like him. Like, it's so obvious to us that she really likes Cameron and he likes her too. So in come Donald and he arrives and immediately, <laughs> like, he sits down. Child, he couldn't even get there five minutes and Ashley lets her know, lets him know that she feels some type of way that she has not heard from him in two days. And she, she just wasn't holding back. So he said, well, you know, I texted you. Didn't you get my text? And she's like, no, I didn't get any text. So he takes out her, his phone and he's showing the message that he sent to her. And so she's like, nah, bro, I did not receive a text message from you. And she takes out her phone and she shows her messages and she's like, see, I didn't get any message. So I don't know what was going on with their phones. I don't know, maybe something was off, but either way, Ashley says she didn't get the text. She even showed him, but he's showing his phone. Like I did send you text, but whatever. So she says um, in her confessional that you know, it's 2023 and cell phones aren't the only way to communicate. You know, she says you can communicate through Instagram, you know, any other type of social media. You can try and get in contact with somebody if you really wanted to. So anyway, they dropped that discussion and all four of them began bowling and they're just having a good time together. So um, once they finished bowling, um, both couples, they sit down and out of nowhere, Ashley brings up the whole text message situation in front of Zadia and Cameron. And she lets Donald know that she should have called. Now, this is my thing. I'm just saying for me, even if I felt some type of way, and let's say I was in Ashley's shoes, even if I was in, even if I felt some type of way, 
I ain't never going to let no dude know I feel some type of way. I think Ashley should have kind of played it off because just how men are, they don't like it when you kind of go full force with it. Y'all know what I mean. Y'all know what I'm saying. I would have just played it off. And most importantly, I definitely would not have brought that up in front of Zadie and Cameron, but teach his own, right? <laughs> so anyway, Donald starts apologizing to her, you know, saying like, I'm sorry. You know, I, I should have called within those two days. I apologize. But Ashley was just still upset about it. So Ashley is just pissed at this point, And she tells Donald that she loves Zadia and Cameron because they communicate with each other. And I'm thinking, I'm like, Ashley, girl, do not say that. Like, don't sweat it. Do not sweat him. That's even going to push a guy even more away because they're going to feel like, okay, we just met. We just, you know, kind of went on, I guess, like a date or two. I don't know why you kind of tripping, but okay. But I understand where she's coming from. I do empathize with her. I would just let her know, Ashley, don't you ever let no dude know you feel some type of way, especially not in the beginning stages. Play that junk off. I feel like when you get in a relationship and things like that, you communicate, you talk about how that made you feel. And yes, you can do that during dating, but I think so soon, I, would, I wouldn't let him see me sweat. I'm just saying. But anyway, so in the next scene, we see Bernicia go out on a date with Jabari, you know, the guy she kept on last episode, and they end up going to a restaurant. And pause, um, own, ready to love, production company, whoever, I'm gonna need y'all to um, do fun and new dates. Like we're always seeing uh, these people go to restaurants, but I want to see dates that are fun, that are exciting, just kind of, I don't know. I just want to see different dates. I, I'm just kind of tired of seeing everybody go to the restaurant. But anyway, so they end up going to a restaurant and Jabari asked her, you know, how was her day? And she lets him know that she went out on a date. So remember, she went on a date with Walter. So she tells him about the cooking date that they had. And of course, Jabari shows that he doesn't like the fact that she went on a date. He's just not feeling it. But Vernicia is like, I'm going to go out with other people. And she just wants to go through the process. She doesn't want to just solely stick to the first guy that she met, like she did um, in the previous season of Ready to Love. So, um, Vernicia lets him know that she believes that a man is to provide and take care of his family when it comes to gender roles, because they were talking about gender roles. So, she lets him know, you know, I'm not a gold digger, but, you know, I believe a man is supposed to provide and keep a roof over our family's head. So, they begin to talk about how much should a man make, and Jabari lets her know that, you know, he's not an entrepreneur but he is an employee, he works somewhere, and he does have a cap on the amount of money that he makes. So basically like his salary. So she lets him know that two people are better than one and that they can make it work together. So, you know, he seems relieved by that and, you know, they just start playing pool because like there was like a pool table at the restaurant. And so they're just playing pool and just enjoying each other's company. So back at the house, um, we see all four women sit down with Tamika, the matchmaker, and they let her know how their blind dates went. So Ashley, she lets Tamika know that she was spot on with putting her on a date with Kirsten and that there was definitely chemistry between the two. And she lets her know that she really liked him. Next, Zadia tells Tamika that her date with Kirsten went well at as well and that he was a good match for her but the only thing is she didn't like that silent prayer that he did over dinner i guess that just kind of threw her off the next sharice lets tamika know that her blind date with walter was enjoyable and that she liked he was leading her and she likes when a man leads then bernicia says that her date with walter went well and that they went to a cooking class so she said that he is good with his hands and he's a manly man and she likes those great qualities about him. So Tamika asked the ladies, you know, how does it feel to go out on a date with the same guy? 
So immediately Ashley says that, you know, we're four beautiful women. We're not in competition with each other. And it's the first time she didn't feel jealousy about, you know, seeing her date with another woman or knowing that he went out with someone else, especially someone she knows. So next, Tamika lets them know that since they each have been on two dates this week, that they now have to make a choice to keep one man and let the other one go. So we find out she's invited their dates to come to the house later and they're gonna spend time with them and they're gonna ask them questions and get answers that they're looking for. So the guys that she's bringing over to the house are their keepers. Remember that was from last episode, not the, the two guys they went on blind dates with this week. So afterwards, um, they have to bring their keepers to the side and tell them if they want to continue dating them or if they're going to make a move with their blind dates from this week. So that's what Tamika tells them they have to do once their keepers come to the house. So we see later on that the men arrive at the house and we see Ashley talk to Donald, you know, her keeper. So again, Donald apologizes to her about the text message situation. And you know, she accepts his apology, she's cool with it. Then next, we see Zadia inside of the house talking to Cameron, and she lets him know that she's enjoying getting to know him, and she has decided to keep him around. I mean, like we all didn't know, because, you know, her and Cameron, they're really feeling each other. So, of course, he's happy, and he gives her a kiss on the cheek. It was so cute. I really like seeing these two together. So next, we see Sharice sitting down outside talking to Maurice, and she lets him know that she's been working on her communication, you know, but he's not really communicating much with her. So he tells her that, you know, I don't have anything to hide or anything if that's what you're thinking, and I am an open book. So she lets him know, you know, I'm an open book too. Um, and even though you're not a big communicator, I do like your style of communicating. So next, we jump on over to Vernicia and Jabari, and they go inside of the house. And Vernicia lets him know that she appreciates him being consistent with her. Um, and then she says, but... And then the scene jumps back over to Sharice and Maurice, and they're in the kitchen. So Sharice lets him know that he's a gentleman and they have so much in common, but she does have concerns that, you know, he's not opening up enough to her and she needs that emotional, verbal, and physical connection. Then we jump back over to Vernicia and Jabari and she lets him know that she's going to keep him around. So I was kind of on the fence with that because I wasn't sure if she was going to keep him because, you know, it seemed to me she was feeling Walter, her blind date, but, you know, she did decide to keep Jabari. So child, he is relieved and <laughs> they hug it out. So next we see um, Charisse and she lets Maurice know that she's decided to keep him around as well. Um, and she lets us know in her confessional that she feels good about him and she believes they're a match. So I was a little bit shocked about that too. I didn't think that she was going to keep him around only because he's still not communicating. So we'll see. So lastly, we see Ashley tell Donald that she believes in open communication and she feels it's an area that, you know, he's lacking in. And then all of a sudden, Ashley gets up from the couch and she starts crying and she walks away from him. So I, I don't know what that was about. And I'm like, Ashley, I know everybody's different, you know, with their emotions. We all have it. But I just, I don't know. I guess I really couldn't understand why she just like was getting up crying. But anyway, yeah, so she does that. And scene. So we're left with a cliffhanger, guys. We don't even know if she's keeping Donald or if she's letting him go. All we see is that child walk up from the couch and just runs away and just starts crying somewhere. So overall, I would give this episode, I would give this episode a six because I thought it was okay. I'll be honest. 
Um, nothing major really happens in this episode. It's almost like a filler episode, I mean, in my opinion. Um, and also, too, we'll see what happens next week with Ashley, you know, what her decision will be on Donald, if she's going to keep him or if she's going to let him go. But anyway, y'all, y'all let me know in the comments below your thoughts on this episode. And also, do you think that Ashley is going to keep Donald or not? Um, thank you so much for, you know, watching my review, watching my recap. Uh, please like, subscribe and comment below and hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And before we head on out, I just want to say a prayer over you. And so I would love to say this. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. This is my prayer over your life. In Jesus name, amen. <laughs> So take guy, take care guys, you know, have a blessed day and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.